I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. This video is one in a series I did with my friend Ryan Harrell there sitting next to me in which we go through every single one of the BL Heli 32 options and tell you what they do and, most importantly, when you might want to change them. If you look down in the video description, there is a playlist link with all of the other videos in this series where we, you can learn everything about BL Heli 32 and if that's what you're into, go check that playlist out. Uh, sign modulation mode. This is a new one. Right. It's new. It's it's new, and it's still technically beta. I would then, unless you're willing to risk your stuff and like okay. experiment, I would leave it off. Um, but basically, um, the way we talked briefly about commutations and how the the ESC pushes the motor around, basically. Um, from phase to phase. So the default way it does that is is through a, basically a simulated sine wave with mm -hmm. uh, it's called trapezoidal this is drive. Probably over on your on your website, yeah. isn't it? Where yeah. is it? Where is it? Um, so this is a great this is a great picture of it here. So this is what our ESCs are basically doing normally. Mm -hmm. So they're they're basically turning on off on off on off and they're simulating a sine wave right. uh, through trapezoidal um, through a trapezoidal uh, method. So sine wave actually is using uh, a simulated, it's still not purely sine. We can't, it's obviously a digital microcontroller. Right. We can't completely create a sine wave. It's a much higher resolution sine right. wave. Right, right. So it's it's basically attempting to to drive that in a more sinusoidal pattern instead of just just alternating the, the phases directly. So do, what does that, does that make more efficiency? Does it make smoother running motors? Yes, uh, in both cases it can it can make it more efficient. Um, so there, it, it, it also may reduce power slightly and it has a little bit of trouble with high RPMs. Oh. So um, in fact, I believe what, um, what BL Heli is doing in sine wave is technically a hybrid sine mm. drive. Yeah. So they're using sine for low RPMs, but when it Oh. When it gets towards higher RPMs, it morphs like it kind of transitions softly into tra into trapezoidal drive hmm. um, at the higher RPMs to avoid the higher RPM issues, but it still gets the gains of efficiency and smoothness um, at the low RPMs. That's interesting. So, so beta feature, try it if you want. Maybe get smoother motors at low yeah. RPM. Maybe reduction in throttle. Maybe your quad will fall into a lake. <laughs> it could be. Um, <laughs> and it should theoretically reduce some of those mid-throttle oscillations as well because it's oh, going to be a little well, bit that's good. Drive. I'm always, mid-throttle oscillations are so hard to solve. I'm always looking yep. for new ways to solve so, them. So um, there's one additional mode called field-oriented field control. Mm -hmm. So it's like basically there's, that's the, trapezoidal is the most basic. Sinusoidal is kind of a little bit more complicated and the end result is field oriented control. Right. So that's where like it's taking into account all kinds of things and it has to that's, be tuned. That's the thing the Rotorite guys saw when they went to the University of Pittsburgh and the, they showed how you could, the motor knows, the, ex the ESC knows the exact right. position of the prop. You could have props that literally interleave right. And the ESCs would just prevent them from right. interfering. I don't yep. know what the point of it's, that well, is. Well, it's basically using a vector to right. drive the motor instead of um, everything else. But the problem is that that has to be tuned for each motor and propeller and everything. So, like the moment of inertia changes, it can screw up the whole thing. It has to be tuned like a, it has its own like PID controller essentially. Ugh. Ugh. So that's it's, all we need is another PID controller. Well, right, and it works for things like um, DJI where they control the entire power system. Right, and they know every aspect of it, and they can tune it from the factory, and it's good and they don't have to touch it again because it's done. Yeah. So for, for something where we're changing motors, changing props, you know, we're throwing different okay. things but on there But sign all the time. modulation, we might, if you, if you want right. to try it, try it. Okay. Um, let's see. We're good here. We did this whole column. Let's get these out of the way. Min throttle, max throttle. Sure. That's used to calibrate the endpoints. If you're running multi-shot, one shot, then you go through ESC mm -hmm. calibration. There's a video I have about how to do it. However, we're not going to go into that too much because if you're running D-Shot or yeah, any of the digital protocols, they have no effect whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Some people, there's a myth out there that says, oh, if, even if you're running D-Shot, real quick, enable multi-shot yeah, and calibrate. calibrate. I has, mean, this, I, this I always go in and manually set it to the, the typical range no, just no. in case. Nope, nope. No, no, you're, not You're propagating that. the myth. I'm not propagating you're the propagating myth. I'm saying <laughs> just in case I need to switch to multi-shot and I don't want to have to go through the recalibration procedure. Okay. That's Okay, that's I, fair. Like, I don't care about the myth. But All I'm saying is that, like, I always set it anyway just be, so I don't have to go back and fix okay. it if I want to experiment with something later on. Fair enough. 
Fair enough. If, if you're I'm in there already, I might as well just. If you're going to run multi shutter, one shutter, any analog protocol, go through the calibration process. Right. It'll set the values automatically. Though I wouldn't necessarily just tweak them. Oh, I don't even bother calibrating. I just set them. You know the value. I, yeah, I just I do just... 1016 on the low end and 2004 on the high end, and it's good. Okay, don't do that. Just run the calibration. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. And then center throttle is only really relevant if you're if doing you do, bi-directional because yeah, the ESC enable. doesn't know yep. what center throttle is. Okay. So 